I am really interested in fundamental things, and as a result, I am fascinated with the DIY Science Guy channel, particularly because he's doing such amazingly cool science projects with really low-tech stuff. Um, as he says, his favorite price is free, and so a lot of the stuff ends up being repurposed. So I'm going to try to imitate one of Tim's projects, making a hydrogen splitter. Um, I'm, I'm going to take my own take on the design and kind of modify it a little bit, but the general principle is going to be the same. It's going to split water into its constituent elements using electricity. And what I'm going to use for that is some cast-off drinking cups, some cast-off fabric, two water bottles, and a couple of stainless steel Brillo pads. And uh, let's get started. Now the cool thing about Tim's hydrogen splitter is that it's able to produce purely separated hydrogen and oxygen, which means you can do things like compress the hydrogen to run a lawnmower, which is something that he's done. And so I need to make a fabric divider that will separate the gases. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to glue these two back to back with a gap in between them that's gonna have fabric. And then that is going to keep the liquid, uh, allow the liquid to permeate and allow the electricity to permeate, but not allow the gas to get through. And I'm going to start by cutting out that inner circle on these cups. I have unfortunately misplaced my X-Acto knife, and so I'm going to use a shard of flint. You know, like you do. The inner circle has been cut out of these two cups, and now I'm going to stick them end to end like this. That, uh, that wider seam is going to be where I glue, and then I'm going to sandwich some fabric between those. Originally, I thought I was going to need some kind of extremely high-tech, plasticky fabric in order to make this work, in order to have it resist the sodium hydroxide, which is going to be added as an electrolyte. But I actually talked with the DIY science guy over Skype, and he told me that I could just use plain cotton fabric. Instead of nylon, you could also use um, uh, just pure cotton. If you have uh, like a cotton sheet, uh, you could use that. And it's, of course, uh, easier to come by, because uh, apparently that is not affected by the... Uh, by the sodium hydroxide uh, because no because uh, they actually use sodium hydroxide to make uh, uh, to purify it and to also to make cellulose and it's of course almost 100% right. cellulose cotton so so you can try that uh, that is super cool I, I have no idea it, it seems really counterintuitive that cotton would work for that because you know I think of organic things dissolving and solvent yeah yeah I guess but cotton the, has, has some superpowers yeah, <laughs> super cotton. <laughs> and it's a good and basic solution, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Before I do that though, I need to cut these cups so that they will fit nicely onto these bottles. Okay, phase two. It's time to assemble the electrodes, which I'm going to do with these. I'm going to use these two stainless steel forks together with these two stainless steel scourers, and that will form the basis of my electrode. Okay, so the idea is to take this bottle and to have this inside of it. So I'm going to need to put in a bend right here. I'm also going to need to turn this into a bunch of hooks. Approximately like so. And then about like this. Okay, there's one, and there's two. Next, I need to get these inside the bottles. So let's try that out. Something like that. 
We need a spot for this electrode to stick out of, so I'm going to cut in a slit opposite to that hole. Uh, approximately like so. Okay, so I'm going to get that in. The fork is now connected to the left rest of the electrode. And now it's time for this to go in here. And then, okay, and there is the electrode. Okay, and we'll glue that in like so. For this next bit, I'm going to assemble this on here, and then I'm going to do the same thing we did here to the other one. Alrighty, we've got that first part glued on. Now it's time to just glue this part in and check for leaks. Incidentally, word to the wise, this joint that I made, while it's kind of cool looking, is incredibly difficult to glue. So if you ever attempt to try something like this, I don't recommend this design. Um, I think something like having two milk jugs together where they already have a flat side would be way, way easier. Then you could just sandwich some fabric in between, uh, cut out a gap on two sides of the bottle, smash them together, and you'd be there. Only trouble is, it wouldn't be transparent and so it wouldn't look quite as cool. Also wouldn't show off all of these glue messes I've made. There it is, one hydrogen splitter. It's pretty basic, but if it works, I'll call it good. Okay, lots and lots and lots of epoxy. And lots more epoxy, and this one spot keeps showing a hole. I think I got it this time though. Okay. So with all this patching, hopefully this thing is waterproof. These joints seem to have worked where the fork leaves the body. And uh, I think it's ready for testing. Okay, I filled up the one on the left. We're testing the seals by letting it drain. And you'll notice that right here, the water level is slowly rising up, which means water is permeating this boundary. So that's pretty exciting. One thing I just learned by talking with Tim, the DIY science guy, is that epoxy is not the ideal solution for this glue up. Um, I've used epoxy and epoxy uh, dries hard or cures hard, but um, it doesn't actually chemically bond to the PET of the bottles. So the, the bottles and the glue are stuck together just mechanically, not chemically, which means that if the bottle flexes, it can break off the glue because it's quite brittle, which means I'm gonna have to be pretty careful with this. Um, I think it'll work for this prototype, but uh, again, this wasn't the right move. If you want to learn more about how to make uh, hydrogen separators, I highly recommend Tim's channel. By far my favorite project that Tim has ever done on his channel is he took his hydrogen separator and he made pure hydrogen and that's cool, but then he compressed that hydrogen into fuel bottles and used it to power his lawnmower. So this is a guy who knows what he's doing and has made some really cool stuff. By all means, please check out his channel. This power adapter will supply the voltage that I need. This is probably super dangerous. Don't try this at home. Okay, if you look really closely, you can see bubbles are coming off this thing. It's plugged in, I've got power, I've got about 32 volts going into it. And this is the negative side, so it should be producing hydrogen. Which is incredibly cool. Now, you'll notice the water level right now is even. I'm going to put a, um, a balloon on one end, and that pressure should force the water level to change relative to the two sides, because the, the pressure will be pushing down here, which will force this up. And that will be our indicator that the barrier is working properly. This is pretty cool. The thing that I find so fascinating about this electrolysis generator is one, you're playing with the raw forces of nature in your own kitchen. I mean, this is literally tearing apart molecules of, uh, of water, tearing apart the H2O molecule into its constituent parts using electricity. I mean, this is the fundamental forces of the universe. It doesn't get much more basic than this. And in addition, I mean, what this allows you to do is to store energy chemically at home. I mean, you can take water, put electrical energy into it, and then store that as chemical energy in the form of the hydrogen, and then use it to run your lawnmower. This is really cool stuff. This thing is really cool. 
and those are bubbles of hydrogen gas. What's happening is the electricity is literally tearing apart uh, the water molecules. Oxygen is being pulled over to this side, hydrogen is being pulled over to this side. Technically there are twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms in this arrangement. So I guess it makes sense that there's more bubbles on this side. That's tremendously cool. Not seeing quite as much on the oxygen side, but I can see it over here. Okay, so that's been about a minute or two, and you can see that there's a whole lot of this color over on the left side. Something is chemically going on. Now, what I've used for my uh, salt, for my, um, for my electrolyte, is actually just table salt. Um, the, what, what that will do is here on the anode side, it will produce chlorine gas. And then over here, it will produce hydrogen gas plus um, sodium hydroxide, which is what I should actually be using for my electrolyte. So that's fascinating. I'm going to assume that this color is the chlorine gas, which is not behaving at all the way I thought it would. I might shut that down in a minute. But gosh, isn't that fascinating? Project log. So I've added some water to this column so as to force the air in this column up, and that is what is inflating the balloon. Um, you'll notice that this color is not the same color as the water I initially put in. Uh, because I'm using table salt as my uh, electrolyte, this should be producing chlorine gas. I don't think chlorine gas does this, I'm not seeing any bubbles, so I'm assuming it's attacking the stainless steel. Uh, chlorine is an incredibly powerful oxidizer, it's one of the reasons why it's so dangerous, so that's probably what's going on here, question mark. Over here, we are still producing bubbles, and those bubbles are hydrogen, or at least they should be. And presumably, that's also what's in there. So, yeah, this is really cool. I have a lot to learn, and I want to be a little safer about this, so I'm gonna have to study some more. What I'm probably gonna do is save some hydrogen from this balloon, light it off to demonstrate that it is in fact hydrogen, and probably call it a day. So we have a very small balloon full of hydrogen gas. What I've done is I've taken some dish soap and I've put it in a dish and I'm going to use that to make foam bubbles. And I'm going to set them on fire outside where we should be able to see the flame. Okay, here goes nothing. Hey, we made some bubbles. So, no cigar with the bubbles, but I think I figured out what was causing that brown color. I think it was actually the dye in my fabric barrier. Why was it just on the one side? I guess I guess dissolved chlorine makes bleach, and so maybe it was just bleaching it, and that's the dye coming out. Although maybe it was just attacking the fabric. I don't know. An unfortunate incident has occurred. I was trying to fill this thing up with uh, warm water and the proper electrolyte, which is sodium hydroxide, and unfortunately one of my epoxy joints broke. So, unfortunately, I think this phase of the project is over. In the interest of getting the video out, I'm going to actually publish it, but I'm not going to leave you without a hydrogen bubble explosion, and so what I'm going to do is use a different method for making hydrogen gas. What you could do is dissolve aluminum foil in sodium hydroxide and water, and that will produce the gas through a purely chemical, non-electrolytic reaction. Here I have a stainless steel canister, and a little bit of tin foil, and a whole bunch of sodium hydroxide in water. I'm going to put this down, Make some gas. You should be able to see some bubbling going on down there. That is the sodium hydroxide and water eating away the aluminum foil. And it's now bubbling away peacefully. Um, that's probably just regular air. In a minute or two, that'll be hydrogen gas. First, it needs to clear all the regular air that's in there and provide enough pressure to get rid of all that, and then we should have some flammable bubbles. All right, that's hydrogen. Time to take this stuff outside and give it a test. Okay. Hydrogen bubbles, test number two. Woo! That's pretty exciting. <laughs> so yeah, there you have it. Check out the DIY science guy. He'll show you how to make a real hydrogen separator that uses electrolysis rather than a chemical reaction. He makes great videos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Woohoo! I am not competent to make a how-to guide on any of this stuff. I'm demonstrating my exploration. Please do not attempt any of this at home. I accept no liability. Be safe. Please.